Hello everybody, my name is Dutchy. welcome to the channel and let's get right into the video. So today is going to be the start of the guides videos which I will be explaining the tank, DPSs and the healers. Now this will mainly be a beginner's guide but it will also help you if you haven't played Overwatch in a while and you really want to get back into it. So today's video is going to be all about the tanks and how to use them and also about their abilities. Now every single tank in Overwatch is quite a bit different. For example, Hammond right here, Wrecking Ball, is really good in maneuvering around the battlefield really fast because he needs to be everywhere at once. His mobility allows him to be really in the enemy's face but also get out whenever he needs to. And Reinhardt is very amazing because you can actually pop up a shield and actually protect your team from any incoming damage. Now the shield doesn't actually last forever, but that's alright with Reinhardt because if you know how to play him a little bit and you can be a bit aggressive, you can actually charge straight in there, dealing a lot of damage, and with his ultimate, you can smash the entire battlefield away. I do have to quickly mention the tank's passives. Now the tank's passives allows them to actually give less ultimate charge for every single time they get hit. And also their knockback from like boops like Lucio's boop or Bracken Ball's boops are actually a lot less as well. Now let's get into heroes properly, starting off with D.Va. Now D.Va is a high mobility character with also some good damage. Now one of her best abilities though is the defense matrix. Now the defense matrix allows you to block most of the incoming damage that is coming your way. Not all of the incoming damage, like for example Sigma's rock or Rodok's hook, you won't be able to block those with your defense matrix. Now unlike Reinhardt's shield that actually has health, you actually only have a limited amount of time to pop up your shield, but you can absorb as much damage as you can in that time. Now D.Va also has some boosters that are on a 5 second cooldown. Now these boosters allow you to quickly fly up to targets like Farah for example and quickly take them out. It's also a really good tool to get back into position really fast. These boosters also deal 25 damage and also do a little bit of a boop so you can knock players off the map. Diva also has a really good ultimate, which allows her to blow up a mech, dealing massive damage in a wide area. And if you combo this with the boosters, you can pop it in places where enemies will not expect it. A quick little tip with the boosters, if you actually pop it straight away as you use your boosters and chuck it in midair, it's not going to do too much damage. But if you wait for a split second and then allow your ultimate to go off, you can actually deal a lot more damage and it's a lot more unavoidable. Now if you are out of your mech and you want to summon your mech back, sometimes it's actually kind of smart to quickly do it on a target itself because you actually deal damage when you call your mech back. And you can definitely get some pretty hilarious kills from this. Now the shotguns are also pretty damn good, they're not that great at long distance but sometimes it's nice to get that little bit of poke damage so you can get your ultimate faster. Now if you do want to have a little bit of distance in your arsenal, use your rockets at the same time as you're using your shotguns. This allows you to deal a little bit of extra damage just to maybe finish off a target or get that little bit of extra ult charge. Now let's move on to Doomfist. Now Doomfist is a little bit of an interesting one because unlike Overwatch 1 where he's actually a DPS hero, in this one he's turned out to be a tank. And well, the changes to his kit are a little bit strange to me but at the same time I do kind of understand it for making him into a tank. He can't kill in one shot anymore like he used to in Overwatch 1, but now he's more changed into a tank that's more of a disruptor than anything else. Now Doom's Rocket Punch is probably the most notable out of all of them. This allows you to basically knock players off the map or into walls dealing a little bit more extra damage. You also have Seismic Slam which allows you to jump straight up into the air and land in a target which will deal 50 damage in a radius. This is also very handy to get out of situations if you quickly need to. You also have Power Block which allows you to actually block damage that's coming from in front of you but also absorbing that damage and turning it into power for your fist to deal extra damage for your next hit. But just saying, you are actually not fully blocking the damage, you are actually only blocking 90% of the incoming damage. So if they deal enough damage to you, they can technically still kill you. And also certain abilities can actually still pull you out of it, like Roadhog's Hook for example. And one of the best things about Doomfist is that you actually gain some temporary health every single time you hit a target. Now if you hit multiple targets at once you'll get even more health, so this is actually really strong and really handy. Now Doomfist Ultimate's Meteor Strike does around about 300 damage. If you don't hit the target directly you will not do 300 damage and you will actually have a massive scale down of damage. Now what I would actually use these ultimate for instead of attacking people is actually getting out of situations that you know you're gonna lose. Just make sure you land somewhere safe and you can actually heal yourself up with a med pack or something like that or one of the healers that's nearby, as otherwise you'll probably die straight away again. Now let's talk about Junker Queen. Now Junker Queen is one of the newer heroes of Overwatch 2 and she is actually really really strong. Even with the nerf she's just gotten, she is actually still one of the best tank heroes in my opinion. 
just a quick mention, I do actually have a video deep diving on the Junker Queen and all of her abilities properly. So if you guys really want, you can go check that out right here. And well, let's continue on with this video. Now, Junker Queen actually has one of the most interesting abilities in the game at the moment, which is where when she deals damage with either her knife, her axe, or her ultimate ability, you can actually siphon some of the health from the enemy itself. Now, it's not much usually, but it's usually enough to sustain you in battle very, very well. Now, the more targets you hit with these abilities, for example, with the axes right here, you'll actually heal yourself a lot more than if you would only hit one person with the axe. This bleed ability also does damage over time on the enemy itself. So basically you are debuffing the enemy and you are buffing yourself with some health. She's also got a throwing knife that kind of works a little bit like a boomerang. If you throw this knife against any of the targets, you can actually call it back and pull that target straight towards you. You can also actually call this knife back whenever you want and when it goes through other enemies when it's coming back, you actually deal damage to those enemies a little amount but you also gain some health back at the same time from it. Now a little combo I always like to use is when I throw a knife into a target and then pull them towards me and then immediately afterwards I actually pull the X-Wing, meaning I actually get some extra damage on them and also some extra healing. Now the Junk Queen also has this really cool ability called Commanding Shouts. Now this is basically a war cry and once she uses this war cry, everyone around her gains 50 health and she herself gains 200 health. Now she also gets a speed boost and all the allies around her also get a speed boost. Meaning that she can actually catch up to targets and hit them with her axe or any of her other abilities. Now her ultimate is probably one of the best in the game I reckon, especially against anyone who's only got 200 HP. Now what this does, it will do 100 damage, but it will also do a debuff, meaning that you can't actually heal your character. So basically, if you get hit by this ability and you only have 100 health, you are basically marked for death and you will die. Unless there's someone like a Keriko near you or a Zarya who can quickly bubble you, but apart from that, you are basically dead. Now, Orisa is probably one of the most fun characters to play in Overwatch 2, surprisingly. Now, I say surprisingly because in Overwatch 1, she was actually very, very boring. In Overwatch 1, you basically sat behind a shield and you just started firing from the shield and that's all you would basically do. But in Overwatch 2, they actually replaced your shield with this beautiful spear. Now, with this spear, you can actually block a lot of incoming damage when you spin it around on your wrist. Or you could actually use it to quickly throw at an enemy and knock them into a wall dealing even more damage. Now you also have Fortify. Now what Fortify does, it allows you to gain a little bit of health and also get damage reduction to all damage taken. Meaning as a tank, you're even more tankier than before. Orisa is definitely one of the biggest targets in the game, so she really really needed this. Orisa also has a really really cool ultimate now, which allows her to pull all the targets towards one location and then slam the ground after a little charge. The longer you actually hold this, the more damage it does. But people will most likely try to sprint out of it immediately, so sometimes you just kind of have to pop it a little bit earlier than you would like. But if you can pull off a fully charged ult, it is very, very, very powerful. Now let's talk about Ryan. I know we already talked about him a little bit, but let's go over him again. Alright, so Ryan basically has a shield that allows him to block all incoming damage from enemies in front of him. Now this is actually quite handy, because that means your teammates can actually shoot at the enemies, and the enemy can't shoot at your teammates. Now you only have 1200 health for your shield, which actually does sound like a lot, but if you're going up against someone like a Bastion or a Junkrat, that shield will be gone in a matter of seconds. Now if your shield does break, one of the best things you can always do is play corners. Now if you play corners, people have to come towards you, and then you can quickly swing your axe, dealing 80 damage per swing. You can also charge enemies, knocking them against the wall, dealing 225 damage, or knocking them straight off the map. You can actually cancel this ability in Overwatch 2, which you couldn't in Overwatch 1. Now if you do find yourself fighting a little bit of a ranged battle, you still have a fire strike, where you get two of them, dealing 90 damage each. So if you get both fire strikes off on someone, that is 180 damage. Now Ryan's ultimate is called Earthshatter. Now what this does, it will stun every single person in front of him and deal 50 damage. Now the 50 damage isn't much, but that stun period can basically win Ryan the entire fight. Now if Ryan actually uses the Earth Shatter straight on top of you, that means he actually does 250 damage towards the target, and 50 damage to the people behind him still as well. And that's also one of the big reasons why you never want to be close to a Ryan. Now Roadhog is that character that you really don't want to try 1v1. He is the king of 1v1s. Now Roadhog basically has this beautiful chain that allows him to pull targets straight towards him, and if you are a 200 HP target, there's a very, very good chance that he's about to one-shot you. Or if the Roadhog is feeling playful, he'll probably pull you straight into a pit of doom. 
Now Hawk shotgun shots spread out quite a bit, meaning that you can't actually hit your target from long range. That's where a secondary fire comes in, which is a bolded hill shootout that has a little bit of range, but it blows up just like a shotgun shot towards the end, meaning that you can actually get those targets from a longer distance. Now Roadhog also has this really cool ability that allows him to heal himself, and at the same time, while he's healing himself, there's a massive damage reduction as well, meaning that he can survive such things as a diva bomb even straight to the face. This healing is actually really handy for when you're in a really tight situation and you really just need to get the hell out of there quickly. With the straight up damage reduction and the health you're getting, it's extremely hard to kill a hog who's healing. Now Hog's ultimate is called Whole Hog. This basically allows you to shoot a whole bunch of shrapnel, pushing people backwards and at the same time dealing massive damage if people are close. You can also use this to push people off the map, sending them straight back to spawn. It is also very, very effective against any shield, basically melting it within seconds. Now we move on to Sigma, my fellow Dutchman. Now Sigma doesn't have too much mobility, but what he does have is very, very good defense, and some good offense too. Now Sigma's primary fire allows him to shoot two orbs that explode on contact with the enemy. If they do not make contact with the enemy, they will explode after a certain distance. You can also use these orbs to bounce against walls, meaning that you can actually get targets that you can't even see yet. Sigma can also create a rock out of thin air and throw it straight at the target, stunning him for a small second and also allowing him to use his primary ability at the same time to fire and deal some extra damage. This can basically delete any 200 HP targets very, very fast. Sigma also has a shield with 700 hit points. Now with this shield you can actually pop it in front of you and you can keep the shield moving forward until you let go of the shield button. I usually like putting up the shield button when I'm trying to catch bursts of damage coming my way. Sigma can also actually absorb a lot of the damage that enemies deal to him, allowing him to actually convert that damage straight into shield for himself. This ability is called Kinetic Grasp. You can only get 400 shields per time you use this. Now Sigma's ultimate basically allows him to use gravity to his advantage. Now what this does, it basically will lift everybody up into the air and then smash them down straight into the ground, dealing half their health and damage. This is extremely effective midway through a fight where most people are actually quite low already. Now one thing though, you can actually get stunned out of these abilities or you can actually get pulled out of it with the Roadhog hook for example and well, your ability will be completely wasted. One counter against this actually is to put your shield up in the air and then fly up towards it when you're actually using your Sigma ult. Now let's move on to Monkey Boy himself, Winston. Now Winston is a very, very agile character because basically what he can do, he can jump into combat very easily and then also jump out of it very easily because he only has a 5 second cooldown on his jump ability. Meaning he is perfect to quickly dive in and kill some of the healers and then jump straight back out before he gets murdered himself. Winston can also take care of those pesky snipers that have been bothering you the whole game, getting headshots after headshots. Well, instead of that you can actually just jump straight on top of them and electrocute the living crap out of them. Winston also has a shield bubble that can take 700 damage before being destroyed. This shield bubble is extremely handy, especially with your jump ability, because by the time your shield's broken you should already have your jump back meaning you can easily get back to safety after taking care of the backline of the enemy team. If the enemy is slightly out of range with Winston, you can always use the ult fire. Now this does around about 50 damage fully charged, but I would always recommend fully charging it because it doesn't really do too much otherwise. Now Winston can go into his ultimate form, which is called Primal Rage. Now Primal Rage basically allows you to take a lot more damage because you get around about double the amount of health that you usually would, and at the same time you get a little bit of a new moveset. Now with Primal Rage you actually get all your health back immediately, meaning that if you start Primal Rage with one health, you actually will regain all of your health, including the extra health that you get for Primal Rage. Now I would 100% recommend trying to single out one or two targets with Primal Rage instead of trying to knock back everyone, because if you're trying to knock back everyone, you'll only do slight little bit of damage to everyone and it's not going to be enough to get those kills. And another really good thing you can always do is try to knock them against the corner and just keep hitting them, meaning that they can't actually move out of that corner and you basically have a free kill. Just maybe if you are gonna go do that to anyone, try not to do it against any heavy tanks like Roadhog for example, because Roadhog can actually outlive your primal rage. Now we move on to Wrecking Ball. Wrecking Ball is probably one of my most played characters just because I really think he's just amazingly fun. 
Now anyway, Wrecking Ball is all about mobility, movement, and also disrupting the enemy as much as you can. Now just like Winston, he can actually get in and out of combat really fast, which means he's also very perfect for taking out the backline pretty quickly. Now Wrecking Ball's main ability will be his grapple. Now his grapple allows you to boost straight through people and deal some really good damage, and also actually boot people straight off the map. Now you do around about 50 damage with this ability per hit, but the boot potential is extremely powerful, especially in Overwatch 2 now that his boot has been increased. Now with your grappling hook, you can also get some height, meaning that you can actually use your pile driver ability. Your pile driver ability can only be activated from a certain height. Or if you just want to do a sneaky one like I just did over there, you can actually use it on a ledge and then quickly get straight back on that ledge. Meaning the enemy usually doesn't have any time to actually react to what you just did. Pile driver deals around about 100 damage, but the further the target's away, the less damage it does, all the way down to 20. But no matter what, the targets will always be knocked straight up into the air, meaning you can actually pull out your guns quickly and do some extra damage right there. Wrecking Ball can also use Adaptive Shield. Now what Adaptive Shield does, basically the more targets are around you, the more shield you'll get. And since this is counted as over health, enemies actually get less ult charge for hitting you. Now let's talk about Wrecking Ball's ultimate, Minefield. Now what Minefield basically does, it surrounds the enemy with a giant minefield and if they start moving around that minefield, they will be hit by all those minefield, dealing 130 damage per mine. Now the enemies can actually get rid of these mines by shooting them, but at the same time, if you are in the middle of a fight, you're not really going to be focusing on the mines too much because, well, you're either focusing on the mines or you're focusing on the enemies trying to shoot you. Now we move on to Zarya. Now Zarya is a tank that needs to take damage. The more damage you absorb with your bubbles, the more damage you can put out yourself. Basically how this works is whenever you pop your bubble, you get 200 HP for that bubble. And once that bubble pops, you get 40 energy if the enemy destroys it. If the enemy doesn't touch you at all, you do not get any energy at all and you would have wasted that bubble. Now you can also use this ability to actually shield your teammates. Now when you are shielding your teammate, you still get energy from the damage they receive on their bubble. These friendly bubbles are really handy for trying to cover your friends who are just diving in constantly and taking a lot of damage. Meaning that the healers don't have to do as much healing because you are covering them. Now most of the time you will be dealing damage with your primary fire, which is your beam. And especially when it's at 100% charge, it is very, very powerful. But when the enemy is too far away, you usually can't use your beam too much. But instead of that, you can use your alternate fire, which allows you to shoot a projectile, sort of like Junkrat. Now when this projectile hits the ground, it will explode immediately. So unlike Junkrat's projectiles, it won't bounce. Now let's talk about Zarya's ultimate. Now her ultimate is called Graviton Search. What this does, it allows you to trap all the targets that are in the radius in one little single space. Meaning that they can move out of it at all and you can deal some serious damage to them. Now just do keep in mind that the enemy can still shoot out of it so they can still do heavy damage. And especially when they're all clumped together in one ball, that means that all of them will be trying to fight their way out of the Graviton. This is also a great teamwork ultimate, meaning that if you have like a Junkrat or something like that and he has his Riptire, you'll be able to actually ask the Junkrat, hey, do you want to combo ult? And you'll be able to get a nice clean team wipe if you get all of them in one Graviton. However, trying to get the entire team on one ultimate is really hard, so usually I don't actually try to do that. Usually I only go for one to two targets, meaning that if I can make sure that I can actually kill one, I can most likely win the rest of the team fight. Anyway, that's all the tanks in Overwatch. Hopefully this guide helped you a bit to understand the tanks a little bit better and hopefully some of those tips in there as well would have helped you guys out. Let me know in the comments below if you guys liked the video and well, I'll hopefully see you guys later. Bye!